Hello, welcome to the first video in a series of lectures where I'll walk you through integrating the WISE SDK into Visual Studio in order to create immersive audio experiences. In this video, we'll set up a Visual Studio solution with WISE and playback audio events. Later in the series, we'll be creating our own game engine to provide a visual accompaniment to our sound. After that, we'll look into integrating WISE into other game engines such as Godot, Unreal, and Unity. Thanks for watching. First, let's create a new visual code solution. We'll create a blank C++ project, and we'll be working in an 86-bit architecture. I'll explain why later, and also explain some other ways you can integrate this into different architectures. Let's call this project WISE Integration Part 1. If you haven't already, you're going to need to download and install WISE and the SDK from the WISE launcher. Please refer to the documentation for platform requirements. I've gone ahead and included some of the initial header files we'll be working with. To do this in your instance of Visual Studio, we'll need to go to the solution properties and make sure we have our solution connected to the right directories and libraries. But first, let's make sure we have some of the necessary compiler settings ready to go. We're going to need to make sure that we're compiling with C++14 or above. After, we're going to need to review our language settings and make sure the WCHAR is set to yes. Next. Let's make sure we've included the correct directories to our solution. We'll need to include the SDK include folder, and we'll need to include the Win32 folder as well. If you encounter errors down the line, it's likely you'll need to include the common folder located in the sound engine folder, or that you're including directories corresponding to a different architecture. This will produce link 2019 errors. Next. Let's go to Linker and set up the additional libraries directories to reflect the architecture we're working with. For my operating system and this project, I'll be using the Win32 VC170 folder. We'll select the debug folder in this folder and then the library folder. This will tell the Linker where to find our libraries. Next, we're going to include these libraries to our project. If you're using 64-bit, some of these libraries will need to be changed to reflect that. Next thing we need to do is tell Visual Studio which files we'd like to compile with our main.cpp file. To do this, you'll select Source Files, click Add Existing Item, navigate to the Common folder in the Sound Engine folder of the SDK. You're going to want to add pretty much all of these files, and maybe some from the Win32, depending on your project settings. First things first, we're going to make sure we have our input output stream included on in our project. Next, we're going to include the memory manager and AK module header. Then, we're going to build our solution and print a simple terminal message. Success! Now, let's really start coding. First thing we're going to do is declare a Boolean expression. Initialize sound engine. Then we're going to call the following functions AK mem settings, mem settings, AK memory manager, get default settings, and pass it memory settings. Then let's do some error checking. You'll find that a lot of WISE functions return AK success. This is useful for error checking. Let's call an else statement to catch if our function fails to perform. Now, let's do some error checking on our Boolean expression to see if our initialization went as expected and create an else statement to catch any problems. Now let's go ahead and compile. We see memory manager initialized, audio system initialization complete, and the program terminated successfully. Sweet, let's move on. 
Up next, I've cleaned up some of our headers. Eventually, we'll collect these into their own header file. For now, let's go over what we've added. We've included the streaming manager, our platform functions, and some I.O. implementation. We've also added these file packaging headers, which resolve common link 2019 errors. These will need to be compiled with their respective CPP files. Let's go ahead and do that. You're going to find these and other files in one of these two folders. You're welcome to include all of these files, but it will probably slow down your compile time. Next, let's declare our stream settings and pass it the default settings of the engine. Then, let's do some error checking to catch if anything goes wrong in our implementation. If you get this error message, don't worry. It's because we haven't finished our initialization yet. Let's focus on the terminal messages first. Click abort. It looks like all our modules have been initialized successfully. Let's close this and keep going. Next, let's set up our device settings and our input output system. Let's declare this object and pass it to this function. This is from the documentation, and what it's telling you is that this statement is the same as this. Let's do some error checking. Then, let's declare our sound engine. This is pretty similar to everything we've done so far. If we compile our program, we're going to get some errors, but that's okay. We still haven't finished our initialization yet. Our terminal messages are saying all our modules ran correctly. Next, we're going to include the WISE ID header file. This will be generated with your sound bank and the main WISE application. If it's not, be sure to check your generation settings. It's easy to miss the checkbox. Next, we're going to define two of our sound banks. One of these is the bank created whenever you generate a sound bank in WISE. This is the initializer bank, and it must be defined and called first. Otherwise, your application is going to fail to perform correctly. Next, we're going to define the sound bank that holds the event we're going to play for the purposes of this application. Next, we need to set the path for our application to find our sound banks. Then, we'll need to set the localization. In my case, it's US and English. Next, we need to declare a bank ID and pass it to the function which loads the bank. Then, let's do some error checking. If our sound bank failed, we return false, and our application is going to terminate. Once we've done this, we're going to register a game object, and likewise, we're going to do some error checking. Finally, we're going to call the post event function. This will actually tell the engine to play the sound we've assigned to this event in WISE. We're going to need to pass it the event that we actually want to play. And if you look, this event is going to have an ID. This is the ID in our WISE ID header file. You can call this function by this ID as well. Finally, we pass it the game object and we do some error checking. Last thing we need to call is the render audio function. This basically creates a hierarchy queue and executes orders periodically. Typically, you want to place this in your game engine's main loop and have it called according to your frame rate. For the sake of this lecture, we're only going to call it once because we're only posting a single event. Next, we will freeze our program to prevent it from terminating. We'll do this by creating an input stream.
I've added some functions here which terminate the other modules we've declared. Let's give it a shot. Voila, we have some music playback. Here we go, we got the sound. Next, let's set up communication with the WISE engine. If you've ever worked with WISE, and you're probably familiar with the profiler, this allows us to monitor and edit sound in real time where our game is running. First thing we need to do is set up the WISE communication header. I've added some code here to initialize communication with WISE. Be mindful that this only operates in debug mode. In release mode, communication will not function. According to the WISE documentation, debug mode takes a massive performance hit with the trade-off that you'll have access to features such as real-time communication between the engine and WISE during runtime. Okay, let's run and test if this all works. I brought up our input stream to pause the application while we initialize the profiler in WISE. Sweet. This means we're connected to our C++ WISE application. Let's go back and end the input stream to trigger this sound. You'll see the event being called and the event playing back. Here we go. We got the sound. Now I think that's it for this lecture. Some final notes I'd like to end with. Be sure to turn off spatialization and any 3D sound module in WISE when importing your sounds to and performing this tutorial. If you set up communications correctly, it'll let you know when you have it. If you don't, it's likely you won't hear any playback as WISE is expecting a listener and an emitter object. I think a good exercise following this tutorial would be to create something like a piano roll on your keyboard where each key posts an event. Another interesting exercise would be to create a random container on WISE and have keys randomly change pitch and volume. Here's an example of a random container event being triggered in the next game lecture. Please let me know if you have any questions. Setting up the SDK and implementing WISE can be very difficult. Every computer is different and it may take some time, but don't give up.